As, um, as he told you, I've been here a long time, and uh, welcome to all of you to Art Cards. And miniature art has been around since forever, I think. And it goes back even to the Egyptians used to do a lot of miniature art, and they didn't necessarily trade it. So art trading cards have been around um, for a long, long time. And the art cards really were established or became in effect in, um, in 1996. And a gentleman, a gentleman named, oh, I can't find his name now. Anyway, from Switzerland, and he was the one that started the art cards in, uh, in effect. And he had an art exhibit in Switzerland in 1997 that had 1,200 art cards in the exhibit. And at that point, if you wanted one of the cards, you had to bring a card to exchange with one of the cards that was in the exhibit. Traditionally, art cards are not sold. I have made some miniature pieces that are similar to art cards and sold, but not the collection that, uh, that I have. Um, so it's, it's really a fun and exciting kind of way for us to share our art with another person. And uh, I've been doing this since, 19, oh, since 2004, and my wife and everybody else gets after me because I collect everything. I don't throw anything away. And the art cards in Sterling, Colorado were started by the, by the past Sterling Arts Council. And I have the original announcement of the art cards that we were going to do that. And I, and I date all of my, my mail and everything. So it says on here that I received this in August, on August the 17th, 2004. So the first art cards that we exchanged in Sterling, Colorado was in September of 2004. And if you, if you think about that, there was, at that point we only had about uh, six of us or seven of us that traded the cards. Joyce May, and she didn't make it, did she? Joyce May and I, are, are, the, are two of the original members from that group. We started in 2004, and we have continued every month all those years. So imagine how many things that I have, art cards, from individual artists. That is an amazing collection. And we've had, we've had as many as 12 different artists at one time. Uh, currently, currently we have eight or nine uh, students that are that are exchanging right now, and um, we have had in the show. You should be able to see 35 different artists in the show, in the exhibit, and art cards are sometimes not done by professional artists, but they're done by the average person doing all sorts of kinds of things. And what I thought I would do here today is show you a few exam examples of the cards that are in the exhibit and then give you uh, a little introduction to what other people are doing with art cards. And it just so happens that the first one on the right is one of mine. And, uh, and I do a lot of watercolors. I've done a number of things, and you can see those. On the table after the exhibit, I'll have some cards up here that kind of show the different kinds of approaches that I have taken in my own art cards and some of Joyce May's art cards. So this is a pen and ink watercolor, and the one here is by Santara May, and uh, she is a... Uh, a college student and now attending a school in, uh, in Utah, 
but she does a lot of animals. Uh, most of my pieces are kind of expressionistic. I do not like to do or have not done many pieces that are what you consider realistic or naturalistic pieces that look like the tree or look like the landscape as it is. I try to get my pieces with the emotional aspect of the color, the excitement, and you can see that as we go through. Um, the next one, and the unique that a lot of people are using, is kind of is a watercolor piece, and that uh, just allows the watercolor to move as it wants. And this individual wet the paper, the art card was wet, and then uh, they just splashed on the paint. Uh, some of it's controlled, some of it's not controlled. Uh, the next two pieces are done by uh, Larry Prestwich. Larry Prestwich used to be an art instructor here at Northeastern. And um, my pieces that I do are original pieces. Every month I do 16 individual art pieces, art cards, every month. Some of these artists do different things. Larry Presswich's pieces now are what are, are what are called reproductions of his original pieces. These are large pieces, and he sends those to us uh, uh, via the internet, and then we print them the size of the art cards. So this could be, and I'm sure this is a full piece of, uh, of drawing paper, and uh, this one is, uh, is brown ink, and sometimes it doesn't show as well on these slides as possible. The uh, one on the uh, your left is, um, is Conte Crayon, and Conte Crayon is a fine art tool that uh, is colored, and it can be shaped into pencils or it can be done in chalk. And I do have some Conte Crayon you can look at over here on the table if you're, if you're interested in those. Um, the next ones are, uh, are prints. Different than a reproduction, a print is an original piece of art. A reproduction is something that comes from an original piece and then taken from that. The one on the left is another piece of mine and it is a linoleum cut or a relief print. And when you do a, an etching or linoleum print or wood cut, those are original pieces of art. And so I did this one and then printed it. When I do my wood cuts or linoleum cuts, I print them by hand. And I know that a lot of people print them on the press, but when I started doing them in college, like some of you people are, uh, we had to spoon them. So I do a wooden spoon and rub over the whole piece. This is another one, and I'm not so sure uh, how she produced this, uh, if, it's, um, if it's some sort of a, a relief print, and then on the background she just took a, a, a piece of mat board or something and just ran the brayer over it so that she picked up only the surface and printed it. So this is printed twice. Mine is only printed once. And then the other, another process in printmaking is transfer. And what, uh, what the artist does is, is takes a, an image that they have put together and then they put it in a copy machine that has a cartridge, not the, not the uh, printer that most of us have at home, which is an inkjet, but this has a cartridge that has some film on it. And then we can take that image from the copier and we can put a substance on it. And uh, this is by Lisa Wolf, and what what we have done then is we use wintergreen and we take that image off of off of the plate 
And that image then is dampened and then it is printed. And so we put that on the paper and we print it. So again, it's an original print, but it comes from some sort of a copy in here. Uh, the only thing about doing transfers in prints that the image comes reverse to what you have on the original drawing. If you want that, then you have to transfer that image to another, to another, uh, to a reverse image is what I'm trying to say. And then the artist <coughs> also does photography. Um, this one is done by uh, Veronica Hernandez, and that is a, a photograph of a sculpture. So the artists that we have in our club do, uh, do all sorts of things. But a lot of them do photography, and then they take all sorts of images that they want, uh, and I'll show you a couple other images of photography. And then this piece here is done by uh, Phyllis Hart, and you will see in the, um, in the exhibit a couple of a little, um, little tiles. She's a ceramist, and if I can come over here. For a long time, she did little tiles, ceramic tiles, and painted those and, uh, and produced those. The only problem with these is they're very delicate, and several of them got broken uh, just because of handling. But she also is a potter. So in this case, then, the potter, or the artist, is also the photographer. So then they present their image however they want, and then they can mass produce these differently than the pieces that I do that are original pieces. These are reproduced pieces. And then collage. And collage is originally, was started by the French, which means to paste. And it was originally that all collages were only paper, paste, paper pasted onto a, a, a background. In these two pieces, there is some relief in here. This is some fabrics on here and then a ribbon that's put on top of that. Um, and then this one is, looks like wallpaper on the background with a key. And, um, and so that becomes then, when you take the collage that is flat and you put some images on it, then that becomes an assemblage. And if you look at some of the paintings, uh, I think I can't think of his name now. Marshall Regemp and, and some contemporary people, that they have put birdhouses on their paintings and all sorts of things. Those become then assemblages rather than a painting. So this would be much more of an assemblage. This would be a little bit more like a collage in, in that respect. Again, these are, uh, these are two different uh, types of collages. Uh, again, they have um, some image and raise. This one here, is, again, is, is, uh, is folded and manipulated paper, and then it's presented. Um, and the other one is, is primarily paper, but just with a couple images on it. Um, and that's, again, by Lisa Wolf. And this one is by Nancy. And uh, Nancy is from, um, from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Uh, we have artists in our group from California and Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, she was from um, Wyoming. And then most of us are here. Uh, Larry Presswich is now located in, uh, in Longmont. So we have people that come from all over the country. And I want you to look at this one, and then the next one is a quilted piece by the same artists. And so we have all sorts of different techniques and different variety of cards that we have exchanged. A quilted piece, and then a paper cutout piece here. Again, you have some relief to the piece, and this is done by Patty Weingard. 
Uh, these two artists are no longer doing that with us. And some artists, uh, they, go, they come and go and drop back and forth. And this again is another assemblage piece, a collage aspect, but there's some really uh, larger relief pieces on it. And then um, uh, photographed and, uh, and presented to us in that, in that aspect. Uh, this, this is an interesting one again, and this is by, uh, by again, by Patty Weingart, and um, kind of um, different in that sense. This was one of her pieces, and then the next piece is, is her piece. And a lot of uh, artists are in groups. Uh, there's one category of storytelling, or whatever that they want to um, to do. So this is kind of a storytelling, and and of course the if you can't read this at the bottom, it says I brought you into this world, and I can take you out. Um, so we can do all sorts of things with the image, and uh, in that respect, and I thought that was kind of interesting piece. Again, a, a quilt, uh, a quilted piece. By um, by Diana, Diana Allhouse, uh, <clears throat> she is famous. She's a local artist, famous for her quilts and uh, and wall hangings uh, here in uh, in and around the state. She's had several quilt exhibits uh, around the state of Colorado, <clears throat> but she participated with us for a little while. And then one aspect that I've, I've never done, this, this is called string art. And what the artist can do is to take string and do all sorts of different kinds of things with it. And the slide is not real good, but if you look at this rope, this is, a, this is an actual string that goes through the image of this figure on this piece. On this piece, the string is tied around some images that are presented on the background. And you can do all sorts of things. You can tie it, you can twist it. Uh, and then in this, in this particular piece, the artist just laid some string on here and then wound string around in here, and that could be printed. I have done a number of, and they're called collagraphs in this sense. They, they develop from the collage aspect, and then they can be printed. And in this respect, then you get some relief from the piece, which is kind of interesting. And this artist particularly here just laid little tiny strips of, of uh, string all around, which gives it a little bit of relief in that aspect. Most of, them are done on, most of those are done on mat board. And then uh, again, I talked about transfers. These are all different kinds of transfers that the artist can do. And, and I said, most of us here have done transfers with winnow green. But um, talking with Joyce May, she said you can even do, uh, you can even do uh, fingernail polish remover. And what you have to do with that is you have to wet that image and get that image so that it will transfer to another sheet of paper. And you can print them, you can, uh, print them on a press or you can hand rub them. But these are different ones that have been transferred to the image. These are not in the gallery. These, these last couple are not in the gallery. Uh, metal tape, anybody know what metal tape is? Metal tape is really tape that's, that's made for repairing uh, ducts, heating ducts and that sort of thing. And again, you can take that and do a number of things with it. You can do some relief if you want to uh, in that. You can paint it. Some of those could be printed if they wanted to. But um, in most cases, these images are single images. And I'll explain that a little bit later, that, um, that you won't get them as close to the same image as possible.
and it gives you the it gives you the opportunity to do all sorts of, of different techniques and and in uh, different materials. Uh, we traditionally here haven't gotten into a lot of different materials, but some of these people are are doing all sorts of things with these kinds of materials. Oh, did I? Went too far. There. Um, journal cards, I don't know if, how many artists we've got in the group, and if you make a journal, or if any of you are doing journals, uh, and you're not interested in doing a, a, a journal as a journal, we think about you can do a card. And I think about uh, in journaling, you could wake up some morning and if you're not feeling too great, you can make a card about how you feel or how you don't feel in that day, or you can put some writing on it and indicate what's happening with you. So there's another idea of, of just making an image uh, you can do a journal and do all sorts of things with the idea of, I don't know if you can see this one, it says a storm is in my head. Uh, that might be how, the, how you feel in the morning. And then folded art cards, and you can't see this, um, folded art cards can be any size that they want to be. You could do the card this size but it has to be folded so that it is a two and a half by three and a half piece. And so uh, this one, if I can figure out this, this one here is folded down the center and it opens up and I don't have any images of these pieces uh, opening, but all of these are folded. This one here, the wing that's here folds out <clears throat> and there's some writing on it but you can do all sorts of things with that. So your card can be larger than the, the uh, image that you end up to be. And this one here is, is folded in the center, or opens in the center, but this portion here overlaps. So it kind of overlaps a piece and, and makes some interesting pieces. You can put writing on them, you can do whatever you want to with them um, in, in, in that kind of of uh, image. <clears throat> and then part of this, I ended up with this. If you don't think you're an artist and you want to get involved with this, just pen and ink. And, and all of us, people give me a bad time about all my pens that I carry, but I use them almost every day in a different sense. But just do some doodling in your, in your thing, in here. And if you have a problem beginning that, some of the artists take images out of the newspaper and draw over those. And what some of them do is they take the size, and there's a material called gesso. And the artist uh, painter uses gesso to coat his canvas. And the reason for the gesso is to protect the canvas, particularly from the oil paint. And so that's a protection of the canvas, and it's made out of chalk and... Uh, yeah, yeah and, and the new ones, when I started out, it had to be, you know, these new guys use acrylic gesso. I had to use a different gesso and rubber skin glue and all sorts of things. but. You can take the image from the, from the newspaper and give it a light coat of gesso. And then you can paint on that and manipulate it. You can do anything you want to with it. Uh, you know, you can make the eyes bigger. You can do all sorts of things. Make the eyes bigger, do anything with that image. The other aspect of doing that uh, is just doodle. Get up and draw. Uh, most of us have a ballpoint pen in our pocket. There's a lot of people doing just art with ballpoint pen. And it's a good way to begin art card in that process. And then you could come back in and do some pen and ink, and then you can color it with, uh, 
with whatever colors, with, again, with, the, with the acrylic paints, oil paints, um, whatever you would like to do. And that's kind of uh, an introduction. And the other thing I want to say is that some artists are doing what they call diptychs or triptychs. A diptych is two cards that are, the, that are connected together, but they're also separate. A triptych is three cards that are combined together, but they're still the two and a half by three and a half card. But they connect them and do some things, they, uh, depending on who you want to trade them with. Uh, I wanted to show a little bit of, of my pieces, but um, uh, I wanted to... And I didn't, I didn't have any good examples of digital art, but some of those pieces of Larry Presswitches are produced on paper, and then they're sent to us, and then we produce them for the, for the trading cards. Um, there's also a whole group of, of, um, of artists that are doing things just for children, the cards that are geared to children uh, in that respect. Um, and then some of the art groups or, or art card groups are doing theme cards. And we haven't done that here in Sterling, but uh, you could have a theme that would do with cakes or with uh, anything else. You know, one could be people, one could be cakes, one could be flowers. Uh, we've left it up here in, in our group is that we could do whatever we wanted to do, and then we traded those. Um, most, of my, most of my cards are all individual in the sense, except this one here, this series, I did a large painting. And the reason I do 16, 16 cards every month is the paper that I use divides very nicely into 16 cards. And I've never had to have more than 16 cards because our group has never been larger than 16. So this particular painting, I did a full painting on this sheet of paper. And then I cut it up. And it's another option for you to do is to cut up the piece. This is a print. And what I did here is I took, again, matte board. And I put some, uh, some Elmer's glue on it. And then it blocked out some of these areas, and then I then I inked it and put uh, and printed it, and then I did the same kind of thing here with one strip of, of red just to put some color in uh, combination. I use a lot of gesso and uh, and Elmer's glue and polymer painting medium. Polymer painting medium is a medium that's used for acrylics, and it's kind of a plastic, but it works fantastic for glue. And in all of the things that I glue, I used to use rubber cement, but rubber cement in time, if you're using nice tissue papers and things, it will discolor. So I've discontinued using that, and I use either the, pol the polymer painting medium or a solution called uh, Yes. And it, it works beautifully, and it does not leave any trace of residue on the pieces. So just to give you a quick view of some of the things that I've done, this, and they don't show up ideally. Uh, again, a pencil drawing here. Um, again, my interpretation of the landscape and what's happening with the clouds and the landscape. And then every so often I get involved with um, with a holiday that's in the month. So this was February, and I did a heart in February. Uh, <clears throat> went to Las Vegas before, before uh, one of the times that we had to have a card exchange. So I made sure that I brought enough cards. And I try to make my cards as identical as they can for each series that I do. So uh, I brought enough of these so that I could do a whole card, uh, a whole set of 16 with all this Las Vegas stuff on it. Um, into a little flower. Doesn't have to be a realistic flower. 
Um, what I did with this particular piece is that I just splashed some paint on and looked like a center of a flower and did a couple of green lines. And then I came back in with my pen and I did, I did the flower. Uh, if you don't think it looks like a flower, that's my idea of a flower. Uh, and then uh, I do a lot of abstract pieces. And again, this is, I did the drawing. In this case, I did the drawing. And then I came back in and did some watercolor on it. I, I like to play with line. And line is important to me um, in the aspect of what it can do. And I, I incorporate line in my stained glass also. Um, so that line becomes important in both ways. But just to take and do a few lines here, I've done a series that have variation of line. And then my landscape pieces, uh, you may or may not see the landscape in some of these pieces, but uh, my idea of what may be happening with, this, with the stormy clouds or something, and the excitement and the jaggedness of uh, what might happen in the in the mountains or the valleys and some things in here. Uh, the contrast between what happens with maybe a sunny, bright, sunny day and uh, in the landscape. And I let this color come down into the landscape also. So it, it kind of becomes a little bit more abstract in that. Uh, again, another pencil, just trying to do some abstract pieces. Uh, they can become as, um, as abstract or as random as you want them to be. Uh, and then I do some, some things where I try to do some straight line pieces uh, just to give a variety of these pieces and play with color and see what, can, what I can do with those. Uh, most, of my, most of my pieces are either prints or woodcuts. This particular piece here now is an acrylic uh, painting or a card, and you can't see it in here, but there's a lot of texture, uh, and that's the nice thing about with acrylics or oil paints. Acrylics dry very quickly so that you can, you can play with that, but you can get a lot of texture and build up where you don't get that with watercolor in, uh, in the piece. Where did I go? Maybe that's the last piece I had. That may be the last piece. Um, any, any questions? Yes? Uh, some of these are fairly recent. I have, um, I have up here on the table some cards that I did um, early on in 2004. And there's a variety of them in here. Um, so and I vary, pardon me? All the cards are from 2004. Yes, yes. And some of them in, in, the, uh, in the gallery are a little more, more recent in there. Uh, in the gallery, we, you, should, you should see a representative of all the artists that have participated since 2004. There's 35 different artists that we've had exchange in, uh, in our group here in, in Sterling. And we've got a couple of new people that are starting next month, but uh, in that respect. Um, you know, again, the, the variety, and if, if you know, students want to do something, uh, we have eight or nine in our group that's, that's together. If two of you want to get together and change cards, that's great. You know, you don't have to have a whole group of us do it. Um, the department, the, the liberal arts department, all the faculty could get together and exchange those if you wanted. It doesn't have to be. Some people in, the, in your residence hall might want to do three or four of them uh, and get together and just do something. Play with the creativity. And if you, again, as I said, if you don't have an idea, then you can, you can take a piece of paper an image out of the paper, and, and uh, this young lady will not be happy with me. She's a friend of mine. But you can take and cut these up.
And then what if you do, what if you shift them around, or you take them and just shift them, I want her face here, if you just shift them, you know, almost like Picasso or some of the Cubists did, you can just shift these around, and there is a tool that I've never seen until recently, and it's called, this is not an original one, but it's called a Trading Art Card Wizard Tool. And what they, what they do with this is they take this tool so they can see through it, and then you can position it to do whatever you want to with the image so you know what you want. And in this case, I thought this was kind of interesting. If you wanted to do something with violence or something, you could cut that out and do that and paint him and do some drawings. Um, there's another image I have here with, uh, with gentlemen. Uh, the Santa Claus, you could do some sort of thing. Again, put your card on here and do it. If you have, if you have a problem getting started, look around outside. And I look at the, the cracked sidewalks. They're very interesting images that you can take a photograph of and then color those spaces in. I've done a couple stained glass pieces from looking at sidewalks and the cracks in the sidewalks. You can have fun with that kind of thing. Uh, any questions? I have up here um, some samples. Um, you can use markers if, if you don't want to spend any money uh, or much money. Get, um, get some crayons. Crayons are great. You know, they, they've even not got adult, adult uh, coloring books. So get you some crayons. And I don't know how many of you are art students or have, have, uh, have sketchbooks, but you can do... Sketchbooks are kind of expensive, but you can get big ones, you can get small ones. Um, I carry one like this with me all the time, and this one I travel sometimes. But if you're not interested in doing that, and you want to do a little bit of art cards, take some just regular typing paper, cut it in four, and put your image on here, and then do some drawing. You can have some fun with it. How many won't have fun? Yes. I have a question. So you have, you say that you've been doing this since 2004. Yes. You make 16 a month, which is quite an investment for anybody to, to be able to make that many images. So what, what would you say is the biggest draw or the biggest benefit for you for keeping this up for so many years? Just developing my creativity. And just doing a variety of a, a, a variety of different media, and you've only seen a few, but I I've, I've done some crayon with crayons. I like to use colored uh, pencil, and there's a number of different kinds of pencil. I don't do pastels uh, particularly, which is a chalk medium, but uh, just that. And then uh, I'm a big thing on the landscape and what happens. Uh, my thesis. My, my graduate thesis was doing the landscape in the northeastern um, or northwestern part of the state in Washington, D.C., uh, I mean, in the state of Washington. Um, and I got so excited about that landscape when I was there, and I did a lot of paintings with that. Went back to graduate school and did my thesis with the juxtaposition of those images uh, in my paintings. Uh, the landscape provides me with with this, and I can get kind of wild and excited about what happens and let the brush stroke do it rather than painting all of the images of the landscape. I don't need to paint, for me, I don't need to paint the tree. But if you looked at Larry Presswich's pieces that were in the, oh, what did I do? They're going to go clear to the front. Oh, I got to go. Okay. I think it was the one that was 
skipped. Oh. Here. But Larry Presswich, you saw the bridge. You, um, you saw the bridge, and he's very interested in, in two things. Partly the landscape, but his pieces need to be realistic. And that's his nature, and that's his approach. <clears throat> he's also a fantastic figure drawer, and so he draws the figures, and some of those come from his religious aspects uh, in portraying uh, the hands and the feet and what are important in that. But most of his pieces are very realistic in nature so that you can see the image. I want to express the movement and the excitement and the energy that's in the landscape as opposed to what he does. Um, in my opinion, both very valid approaches to it. Uh, Larry uh, does a few abstract pieces, but not very many because this is his image. I do more abstract pieces and, uh, and approach that to my stained glass in that respect. But have some fun with it. You know, and if one or two of you, nobody wants to trade with you, then, uh, then you do them for yourself. Do the journaling like that. And there are some groups, um, the one group I was disappointed in, I just found out uh, yesterday that about the same time that we started our art group here in Sterling, a gallery called the Core Gallery in, in Denver started a group. And they went on for, for many years, and I think the last three or four years, they have discontinued it and talked to one of the artists there that's going to try to get it going again. But uh, you know, if, if we had a group here, if I did my 16 and we had 20 people here to exchange, then I would exchange only with 16 of those people. So you don't have to have cards for everybody in the group. Just like the, the original guy that had 12, 1,200 of them, if you wanted one of the cards, you had to bring a card. And one other thing before I quit, unless there's some questions. If you want to see what can happen with miniature art, go to the Denver Art Museum and see this exhibit. This artist has created, and let me make sure I tell you, 10,000 little, little images. And there are 10,000 of these little images on a circular tube that's about a six foot diameter tube and about eight foot high. And they're all over this image. All oh, different kinds of images, different, different, um, Media, all sorts of things. It's a fantastic exhibit. If you get there, it's, it's on until, until November the 17th. What he's going to do with this then, coming in, come in October, he's going to put something on the internet where you can enter your name and receive one of these pieces. They're gonna, he's going to give all 10,000 of these little images away. But... So, you, so I'm, do, I'm doing an image that is, is two and a half by three and a half. All his images are two inches square. You know, that's not very big. So it's a, it's a nice way, and, and, and uh, we're not doing anything that anybody else isn't doing as far as imaging and doing miniatures. Miniatures are great. If you looked at the newspaper the other day, the big thing now is for... for uh, a stylist to paint images on your fingernails. Big thing now. And each fingernail is a different image. So uh, miniatures have been around forever and they'll be around. Questions? Goodness. Okay, what's going on in that left? This? Oh, the, the, this is this is figures. He's got, uh, and I think part of it comes from from his Mormon religion, and the image here because this is, and hands are very important to to Mr. Mr. Presswich in in all of his images. Uh, you can have a very realistic painting with the figure 
uh, in proportion, but the hands become even a little bit larger and extended because hands are very important. But in this image, this is a hand here, and, and this is a scroll, and there's a hand down here again with the scroll, and that's part of the Mormon image. Uh, and and you can you can better you can better look at that in the uh, in the gallery. It's a, it's a little image, but I'm sure this piece was probably uh, 18 by 24 or so in, in the original piece. Oh, <laughs> it could. <laughs> Speaking of that, I uh, I did a number of paintings and and my paintings are really fairly abstract in landscapes. And people saw faces in them all the time. I never painted a face in, my, in any one of mine. But it's the interpretation. And in the art cards, there is a stamp that you can get that you're supposed to put your name, your title, the media, and the date of the cards. We don't do that much here, but I do stamp mine. I do stamp mine on the back. That, and I just have a stamp with my name and telephone number and all that. And then I date mine, and I have a series. If you're doing with prints, you have a series. And what I've started doing is I put a series number, then I put the date, or the number of the piece, and the date. So if you get one of my cards, uh, it will say that this is 8 of 12. Apparently at this point I only did... I only did 12 cards, so I didn't do 16 every month. Uh, but then, so you know, and then what I do is I record the artist when he takes, the, the, the person taking my card has to sign in their name so that I know who took card number one, number two, number three. Uh, and I have that whole list from 2004, and so I know who took what cards. And then I have all of those cards, the ones that are left, I still have those. And I don't know what I'm going to do with those one day, but somebody will. I store all my cards like this. <clears throat> the other artists in the groups, they, they kind of put all the cards, they put all of my cards in one folder and all of other people's in one grouping. I keep every month just like this so that I know who bought, or who, not bought, who collected my cards in the month of September of 2004. So I can go back in there. And I have three large notebooks with these bindings in them, with these in them. But it's kind of fun. I have some of these that you saw up there, and some other cards up here. You can see what they look like. Then I have some of Joyce Mays just so that you can see what the artist does. Joyce May is primarily a ceramist, and she teaches here in ceramics, but she does a lot of cards, she does a lot of transfers and, and other things. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it very much. <laughs>